Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from Interest.co.nz and welcome to a special economic weather report brought to you in association with Bank of New Zealand. Today I want to have a look at New Zealand's big wake-up call. In the last 24 hours, Standard & Poor's has put New Zealand's sovereign credit rating, AA+, on negative outlook. Now this was a real surprise, not just to economists, but to the government. So surprising, the government apparently is in denial. It says that Standard & Poor's has downgraded the outlook on New Zealand because of volatility in global financial markets. That New Zealand's underlying financial situation hasn't changed much, and there's no obvious reason why Standard & Poor's would move to downgrade us. They also say this has happened before. Remember, Standard & Poor's in very early 2009 put New Zealand's outlook on negative. And New Zealand managed to convince Standard & Poor's that it was getting its budget deficit under control and that things were improving and we were put back onto stable. The suggestion is we just need to talk them around again. But does New Zealand really have a foreign debt problem, one that would be enough to damage our sovereign credit rating? Let's have a closer look at New Zealand's foreign debt. Who has it? What's happening to it? and whether New Zealand deserves to be downgraded. We also look at what might happen if we are downgraded. Firstly, do we deserve to be downgraded? Do we have a foreign debt problem that's high enough to cause us to be lumped in with other countries whose ratings are being downgraded at the moment, including Ireland and Greece and Portugal and Spain? Well, on the face of it, we seem completely different. Remember, because our economy is closely connected to Australia's, and therefore to China's, we're in a much healthier part of the world economically. There is a saying that Australia is a province of China and we're a suburb of Australia. So our economy has grown much stronger than those culprits in Europe during the same period. Also, our banking system is much, much stronger. Remember, during the crisis, our big banks, the ANZ, BNZ, ASB and Westpac, which are owned by Australian banks, survived pretty well through the global financial crisis. That's because they weren't too exposed to the international markets and because they were well backed by Australian shareholders. And so they survived fairly well. In fact, they were also backed by the Australian government. And this is a key factor. Because actually, New Zealand's net foreign debts are actually relatively high compared to other countries. And in fact, in some cases, even higher than those culprits in Europe who are being downgraded at the moment. So let's have a closer look at New Zealand's debt situation. When you look at our net foreign debt, you can see that as a percentage of GDP, once you include corporate debt or bank debt and government debt, it's actually relatively high, at close to 100% of GDP. That's not far off the situation that Greece and Ireland are in. And when you look at household debt, so how much people in their houses O, compared to their income, we're actually in a really bad situation. We're worse than Australia, worse than Ireland, or almost as bad as Ireland, worse than Italy and the UK and the United States. So our indebtedness, certainly net foreign debt, is actually quite high. The difference is that New Zealand net foreign debt is in the corporate sector, in the banks, not in the government. And that's the key thing, because the sovereign credit rating is based on New Zealand government debt. And we have relatively low government debt as a percentage of GDP. However, it is rising. Every week at the moment, we're borrowing between 250 to $300 million on those international markets. And that's the key thing. We're having to borrow at the same time as other governments around the world are borrowing. In fact, over the next year, they'll be borrowing $10 trillion as we're borrowing around seven to $8 billion. And unfortunately, our outlook has gotten slightly worse in the last couple of weeks. Finance Minister Bill English said that the economy was growing slower than expected and that the budget deficit would be slightly bigger than expected. Also remember, we're heading into an election year, so it's quite unlikely we're going to have a tough budget that really crunches that deficit down. And that may be the issue. We actually have a big debt problem. We shouldn't be in denial that this is somehow some mistake from Standard & Poor's, we need to reduce our foreign net debt. That's going to take a lot of work by our country and by our government. 
the obvious way to do it is to reduce the government deficit and to improve our national savings rate and reduce our net foreign borrowing through the government. That's the most immediate way. Unlikely to happen in the next year because of the election coming up next October, but it's obviously something Standard & Poor's is worried about, and it's something that we shouldn't be in denial about. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was a special economic weather report brought to you in association with Bank of New Zealand. Thank you.